What's up, everybody? Ian here with Redline. I'm doing a follow-up video for you guys. Uh, a few months back, I did a video showing you all the different types of blasters that you could get for a few hundred bucks or less. Uh, used them on Project Redline and showed you how everything worked, how quickly it removed your material, how much material it used, all of that kind of stuff. And that video has done very, very well for me. So I'm doing a follow-up video now. We get people all the time that are buying blasters from us and they're asking what types of media should they use and a lot of folks just don't know what media they should be using. So the purpose of this video is to show you all of the different blast medias that I was able to get my hands on, how they work, what type of finish they leave. We're going to show you that. I do want to say that I'm going to take soda out of the equation here. I've got other videos where I'm demonstrating soda and showing you how it works, but if you'll have a look at this stuff up close here, you'll notice that this stuff is more like powder than it is sand or any type of an abrasive. It's not good for removing, you know, rust, powder coating. So I'm not going to be using soda in this video comparing them against all of these abrasives. Here a little later, we're going to do some blasting on some body panels to Project Redline, our 67 Nova build. Got a bunch of videos out there on that. Check that out. I'm also going to do some glass etching. I have never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to expect. I just picked up a little piece of glass from my local Ace Hardware. I have partitioned this off into different sections here with some, uh, some duct tape so that we'll hit them with all of these different medias, pull the tape off, clean the goop away and see exactly what was left. I've decided to do this video a little bit differently. Um, I, I was initially inclined to say I was going to do this all in a sandblast cabinet. However, I've decided against that because if I do, you guys are not going to be able to see much because even with a vacuum system, sandblast cabinets are very, very dusty inside. So what I've got here is I'm basically bringing the components of a sandblast cabinet outside of the cabinet. I've got an air foot pedal here that goes to one of our lift tables. Uh, I've got a sandblast cabinet pickup tube, and then I've got a siphon suction gun from our RE70. All three of these things are available on our website. I'm going to put links down below in the description so that if you want to pick up these three items and then, you know, get yourself a few fittings and some air hoses I have, you can do some blasting outdoors using a siphon gun. Let's have a look at the different medias that we're using. This is beach sand I picked up from Pensacola Beach this morning. This stuff is definitely going to have to be sifted and filtered in order to be used. I'll show you more about that here in just a minute. Next, I've got three different grades of 10X garnet. I've got 20 to 40 mesh, 40 to 70, and 70 to 100. If we have a look at the coarse stuff here, it's relatively coarse. Uh, looks like it's probably going to flow pretty nicely. I'd call it more of a medium coarse, even though this is frankly some of their most coarse stuff. Now, if we have a look at the medium and the fine, these two are almost identical. I can see a little bit of a difference. This stuff has got kind of a kind of a sheen to it almost. It's so fine. And if we have a look at the medium here, of course, it's exactly what you expect right in between fine and coarse. So this is a little frame that I made years ago, a little wooden frame, and hopefully you can kind of see that. It's got a chicken wire window screen looking uh, mesh material that I've just stapled in place. Uh, I think I picked this up from Lowe's years ago, and whether you're trying to sift and clean, you know, raw material like I've taken from the beach, uh, or if you're reusing your media because you know it's been compromised and it's now got tiny little particles in it that will stop up your gun, it's a good idea to sift your media uh, when, you, when necessary. The reason that I like to do it this way is when I set it down over my bucket, it and I pour my sand in here, it kind of falls down in the middle a little bit here and it will kind of form a little valley and then as I shake it, it will work its way towards the center. I find it to be handy to do it that way. That way it does not start to get over to the outside of the bucket and make a giant mess. So kind of let me show you what I'm talking about. So depending on what size media you're trying to filter will determine whether or not this goes quickly or takes all day. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about in that at the end of the day it starts to filter out 
these little pieces, like you see those little black pieces? Those will stop up your gun, and every single one of those that makes it into your media will, you know, end your day, and you'll be done blasting. So filtering your media is really important, especially if I'm using raw material like this that's not processed blasting media. Just for the heck of it, notice how much faster this process is when I'm using media here that's crushed glass and garnet. Uh, this is actual true blasting media, way, way quicker. It just falls right through my screen. Next, I've got some Vitro Minerals crushed glass. This is 20 to 40 mesh, basically recycled glass bottles is what this is. We've been selling it for years. Customers have been really happy with it. This is coarse black beauty coal aggregate media. I don't know the mesh count on it, but it is very, very coarse stuff. This is Quickcrete medium grit sand. You get this at your local hardware store. It feels a lot like beach sand, but honestly, it doesn't seem to clump together and want to stick to itself like beach sand. Granted, the beach sand I literally got from the beach this morning, so it could be that that stuff is still a little bit wet, but nonetheless, this is really nice, you know, dry, thin sand. Uh, definitely is going to need to be filtered. I picked up this black 70 grit aluminum oxide this morning. I've never tried this stuff before, so I'm curious to see how it works. I'm told it's very abrasive. Uh, it feels pretty fine, despite the fact that it's 70 grit. I can tell you this stuff is quite expensive, so this is nothing you're going to want to use outdoors. Lastly, I've got some number 12 coarse grit walnut shell. This stuff is supposed to be great for cleaning, but not so much as an abrasive for really removing material. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that it's going to work through our siphon gun, so in the event that it doesn't, uh, I guess I'll use it in the vibratory tumbler. All right, I'm set up and ready to do some testing. I have laid out a tarp so that I can collect and keep all of my media. I've got my airline running into my foot pedal. Airline comes out of the foot pedal goes into the back of my gun and then my clear tube comes out the bottom of my gun and goes into what we're going to try first which is a pickup tube tube and a uh, just a pail of uh, crushed glass up here got some safety gear gloves face mask respirator do rag to keep it all out of my hair and then my substrates i've got some uh, rusty metal my glass i'm going to try and frost uh, this is a deck lid from my uh, 67 Nova. And lastly, I got a piece of uh, square tubing here that's got some powder coating on it in case I feel that the, uh, the media is really aggressive and worthy of actually doing uh, powder coating. So let's give it a shot. Luke, I am your father. I just want you to get an idea for how quick this glass is getting eaten up by this number six nozzle. Let's see if the glass does anything against this powder coating. All right, let's have a look after testing our crushed glass. It did really well uh, pulling the paint off of this old deck lid. It did remove powder coating. It wasn't fast, but it did it. Um, the rust removal, it worked, but it was probably slower at rust removal, I think, than just about anything. But, I mean, it works in a, in a sandblast cabinet where you're not sitting there losing media. Uh, that's a viable option. In terms of frosting glass, 
I wasn't impressed with how it frosted glass. Um, I mean, I could have sit there and got that to a nice full frost, but I would have used up a lot of media to do that. Again, that would really need to be in a blast cabinet. So uh, the glass did quite well. Uh, let's check out the other stuff. All right, let's try out 20 to 40 mesh garnet. Frost a little glass. Remove a little powder coating. And let's try a little rust. Okay, for the coarse grade garnet, it did remove powder coating, but honestly, I felt like the, the glass uh, was quicker and probably did a little bit better job. In terms of stripping the finish of the car part, it did really well for that. Um, I know you guys can't feel it, but I can. It's a little bit, you know, uh, rougher finish on the glass than it is on the garnet, uh, but still, I was happy with how the garnet did. Where I wasn't crazy with the garnet was the rust removal. I mean, it removed rust, but I don't know that it really did it as well as the glass. Uh, I did feel like when it came time to frost glass that uh, it was probably a bit more effective at frosting glass. I just felt like it, it did it quicker. Of course, I wasn't going to spend it all day to sit there and frost it perfectly and use up all of my media, but you get the idea. That's uh, coarse garnet. All right, let's try out 40 to 70 mesh garnet. And let's try it out on the powder coating. Now let's frost a little glass. All right, for the 40 to 70 uh, medium garnet, it did really well frosting the glass. That was probably my best result so far. Uh, I did think it did a real nice uniform job pulling the paint off of this old deck lid, left a smoother finish uh, for the rust removal. You can see the spot right there on the right. You know, it was, it was okay. Uh, I don't know that it was quite as quick as the coarse, but frankly, not a huge difference. As far as removing powder coating, uh, it was probably the least effective so far as I get to a finer garnet. So there we go. Let's try out the uh, fine garnet. All right, 70 to 100 garnet. Let's see what happens. And let's frost some glass. Let's try a little rust removal. And a little powder coating removal. All 
All right, so the finer garnet, I was just absolutely thrilled with the way that it removed paint from here. Left a super nice smooth finish. It pulled the paint off just way faster than anything so far. In terms of powder coating removal, it, de it definitely did the poorest job of anything because you really need something coarse for powder coating. As far as uh, rust removal, to be honest with you, even though it maybe wasn't necessarily the fastest thing, I find it to leave the best finish. It does a better job of getting down in between all the tiny little pores versus, you know, the more coarse stuff that we've tried out so far. Uh, the fine garnet just, you know, it really went to work in all those little bitty locations. Now, it uh, was kind of what, what I was expecting in terms of frosting the glass. So far, the fine garnet did a great job of frosting the glass. You can see how this is fine. This is medium. It's more of a speckled look. And if we look over here at our coarse garnet, it's really, really speckled. So the type of finish you're trying to get really determines, you know, what, uh, what grade of garnet that you're using. Um, probably my favorite stuff so far. Okay, so I have attempted to use the coarse Black Beauty. Uh, unfortunately, it's not successful. The biggest nozzle that I've got for my gun is a 7 millimeter, and it literally won't even flow it through that nozzle. Uh, coarse was the best thing that, uh, excuse me, the only thing from Black Beauty that I could get my hands on locally. I have used this stuff before, and I can tell you from personal experience, uh, if you get the finer stuff that will flow through your gun, it's great at rust removal. It uh, does pretty well on powder coating, no idea on glass. So uh, my t test here for the Black Beauty is a failure. All right, let's give it a go with our beach sand. Let's frost a little glass. Try a little powder coating removal. And okay, let's try some rust removal. All right, so the beach sand did really well at removing a lot of paint very, very quickly, and I liked that. Uh, you know, it removed rust, but not as well as the garnet, to be honest with you. Uh, it did remove powder coating up in here. However, I started experiencing a problem, and I flipped it over and tried to start doing a new section in here, and I was having a problem getting the beach sand to just flow steadily. And what I realized is happening here is this. Beach sand, of course, from the beach yesterday, has got uh, moisture in it, and you'll notice how there's like a little cavity down in here. I, find my, I found myself constantly having to shake, you know, and stir my sand in order to keep the sand flowing. Uh, I believe the reason for that is that there's moisture in the sand. I think if you were going to use beach sand, you would... You would do yourself a favor to just spread it all out over a great big tarp like this, leave it in the sun for a day, maybe two, and then do your blasting. I do want to note that for the uh, frosting of the glass, it did uh, pretty well. It really did. Worked a lot better than uh, I was expecting, very similar to the fine garnet. Okay, uh, let's try some uh, aluminum oxide. All right, let's try some aluminum oxide. For what this stuff costs, it better be amazing. Let's give it a go for some powder coating removal.
And let's try some rust removal. And let's frost some glass. All right, so aluminum oxide was great at some things and terrible at others. Uh, right here where I tried to remove powder coating, it was a joke. I mean, it was just almost useless. However, when I was removing paint, uh, all up in here, it really just did fantastic. I do want to mention that whereas some medias would remove paint and would leave rust spots kind of sticking through, the aluminum oxide did really, really well at just taking everything away. I was pretty happy with how it did when I did straight up rust removal over here and I think I had my best results so far when I went to go frost glass. It did that just effortlessly, very, very quick for frosting glass, so I liked the aluminum oxide a lot, as long as we're not trying to remove powder coating. All right, so for my walnut shell, I've got my jet screwed all the way in. I've got a number six nozzle in the end of this thing, and there's no point in showing you, it does absolutely nothing to paint, rust, uh, frosting glass, anything. I've been told that this stuff is great for cleaning something uh, really just cleaning it, something that you're not trying to pit real badly. So I've got this, this plastic panel off of Project Redline, our 67 Nova build. Watch what it does to the plastic with all of this terrible old finish on here. So there we have it, the walnut shell cleans this old brittle layer of, frankly, I don't even know what, right off of this plastic kick panel made in the 60s. You can see the finish that it's left there. You know, if I was going to try and paint this thing, I might hit it with some sandpaper after this to smooth it up a bit. It's, it's still a pretty rough finish, but it gets rid of all of the junk, uh, you know, works quite well for cleaning up plastic. Before I demonstrate the hardware store sand, I just want you guys to see how much junk is in this that will clog up your blaster. A lot. All right, let's give it a go with hardware store sand. Let's frost a little glass. And we'll try and remove a little powder coating. Lastly, let's remove some rust. Okay, our hardware store sand really did great at removing paint, but notice how it removed paint, but it didn't really do much to that rust. I had to really sit there for quite a while and work on the rust in order to get the rust to come off. So, you know, it removes rust, it just doesn't do it quickly. Uh, I was really happy with how it frosted the glass. It did that, you know, pretty quick, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, as far as powder coating removal, not so much. You can see there, you know, it just didn't do that great. Uh, but, you know, it does great for paint and uh, frosting glass, and it's cheap. I wanna share a little trick with you guys that I've learned. If you're trying to remove powder coating, and powder coating is obviously very, very difficult to remove, Watch what happens to the powder coating as I heat this stuff up. 
it'll start to sparkle and you know literally little pieces of it will just come flying off as I burn up the powder coating and so I'm gonna go through here I'm gonna heat this up kind of char that powder coating and then when I go hit it with my blaster that stuff is gonna come off like the cheapest paint that ever was hot potato hot potato hot potato hot potato hot potato hot potato All right, now that I've cooked this with the torch, watch what happens to it when I hit it with the Quick Crete Hardware Store sand. All right, everybody, there you have it. Uh, made a hell of a mess out here today. Got to get this uh, stuff uh, cleaned up before the wife gets home. I know you guys are going to ask about my air compressor. I'm running 17 CFM at 155 PSI, unregulated for the blasting I did earlier. If you want to have a look at the glass and see what worked best, pause the video right now. In conclusion, it's really not about what media is best, it's about what media is best for you. Some things are good at removing rust, some at frosting glass, some at removing paint, some that kind of do a little bit of all of them. Uh, you know, just kind of depends. Um, it also, you know, depends on your budget. The hardware store sand was really cheap, the beach sand was free, the aluminum oxide can really only be afforded by the ultra rich. If you found this video helpful, and I hope that you did, give it a thumbs up down below. If you want to see more videos from us, click subscribe. I want to let all my viewers know that I really appreciate you guys watching this channel and supporting it. We get a lot of customers from YouTube, so I'm really happy to make these videos. I hope that they're helpful for you guys. Appreciate y'all watching. You have a good one.